Well, I know it's fight week, but uh, more than that, it's a uh, Batman Chris Wade fight week, which is always fun for us. Is it extra for you? Is it fun for you, or is it stressful for you, or what's it like? Uh, it's fun for me because um, this is where I, this is not where I shine, but this is where you can tell the difference between the two of us. Uh, it is very one-sided when it comes to me speaking on the mic. Um, and to me, it's been very one-sided when it's come to a head-to-head -head thing. Uh, so I'm excited to continue the wave that I had this year, get that bad taste out of my mouth that I had in San Antonio, and, and get back to my winning ways. You right. know, this was the year to win it. I was the number one seed, and the only hiccups that I had were in, in San Antonio. So I, I, I asked my agent to get me back in the cage, and you know we're here on championship week. I'm curious to know, obviously you guys have had this long-standing rivalry. You had a pretty amazing conference call building up to this. What's it like after that? Do you just like hang up the phone and like just go about your day? Or are you like pissed off the rest of the day and angry? Like what, what's it like for you? I didn't get pissed off at all during that interview. I actually felt, um, you know how he said I was a bully? I actually felt like he was right. <laughs> I felt like I definitely bullied the shit out of him in that interview. Uh, I hit him with a little Ric Flair after I hung up. I, I was I was juiced up, and after I hung up, I was just like, "Whoa, whoa!" That was that was really good, you know. So I felt like you know he set himself up for a couple of different knocks out of the park. Um, I made him laugh, which I thought was funny. He was laughing at himself, which I thought was not only funny but um, a testament testament to my jokes so uh, I was uh, I was happy I was happy with the performance nice last thing for me uh, obviously we've all been looking forward to this fight but man with all the news that's happened everything I mean what yeah. does that change anything at all? I mean I know there's like bragging rights here and some pride on the line but given all the options that seem to be on the table now has this fight taken on a new meaning for you I know it's very I'm very focused on Karen at this moment um, there's no part of me that is looking forward to the Bellator information and things like that because I have I have looked back at that. Um, I don't feel like Bellator uh, used me in the right way, and therefore I asked for my release. And I and I believe, you know, the career that I've had after Bellator was saying that, hey, you know, I'm doing better without you. And now it's a full circle. They have to come back, and the guys that you know were running away or you know asking management for help for 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 not fighting me, uh, they got to come see me now. And I think, you know, with me being a PFL guy, and I say I'm pretty favored with, you know, the, the, the higher ups at PFL, I think I can get my way with some of the some of the guys that were ducking and diving. So I'm excited for what PFL has done, and I'm excited for what PFL is going to do. I want to bounce off of that question. Is this kind of a legacy fight for you, or what does this fight mean for your legacy, knowing that all of this is going into making the fight? Uh, I ain't thought about it that deep into a legacy type of thing. Um, I think over, over a grand, I, I got a message today that this was on my 10th year. Um, I had, my first fight for Bellator was November 22nd, 2012. Um, so, or 2023. 2013. <laughs> <laughs> no, really. Either way. Uh, we'll, check, we'll check that for you. Just wait. We're gonna... <laughs> check, check the resume. Either way, um, it has been a wonderful 10 years uh, or more, and um, I'm still going strong. Uh, I haven't looked at a legacy because you start calculating legacy. You start feeling as though you're one foot out the door and starting to look at the grand scheme of things. And, brother, I can tell you right now, I'm still hungry for championships, so we ain't even looking yeah. at a legacy thing. So what comes after Chris Wade? Do you have anyone in mind or any fights in particular? I'm looking at Karen right now. Um, everything, I'm looking at Karen. I'm looking at his daddy, Thomas. I'm looking at anybody that has a Wade last name that can get it. Anybody can get it. Everybody going to get it. But the the new the new hunt in, in, with the roster at Bellator it excites me for sure. So... Um, uh, I'm expecting to see some 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 interesting stuff next year. Last question for me: Do you expect another fight with Chris Wade? I don't expect Chris Wade to even be in this organization. <laughs> hey, Bubba, take us back to the beginning here. I mean, what was your first impression of Chris, and was there a specific moment where it all just went south? Wallace is the only Chris that I recognize. Karen is who you're talking about. Um, I didn't think Karen was a good fighter then. I was going through a lot in my life and I didn't make him a serious opponent. So he became a serious challenge in that time. I showed up to make weight 
for that camp. As anyone could tell you, I was getting some money. I had just beaten uh, the two-time champion. You know, I was feeling good about myself. I was, you know, out there a little bit at the top of Vegas, living a good life, <laughs> doing bad man things. Bad man. <laughs> and um, it, uh, it definitely caught up to me. So being that I focused on him this year, it was one-sided as I always thought it would be and should be. And uh, we're back to that same focus. So and last for me, I'm curious, outside of the Cajun 2024, um, what are some things that you want to accomplish in the next calendar year? Well, I have a grand opening of my new 30,000 square foot gym, um, new BK MMA headquarters that I'm excited about. Uh, I'm planning on grand opening sometime around late January, uh, Super Bowl, early weekend, early February, something like that. So, yeah, my focus is, is, is building for not only my children, but leaving an inheritance for them. I love it. Best of luck. Baba, you have a unique um, situation this week where you could potentially step in on short notice and fight for the title. Which which fight do you really, really <laughs> want? Man, it's hard. Beat Karen or win a million. Um, I get the revenge from Pinedo. If Braga doesn't make it, I think Braga's going to make it. But, um, man, I, I want to fight for the championship. You know, this other one is more personal and more just about how, I guess it's a, a, a machismo macho thing it's all it's all bravado it's to you know put a stamp on our little trilogy but you know I could care less about Karen if they're going to be giving me somebody for a million um, I'm excited about that like I said I'm leaving inheritance for my children and that's the closest way to get it done um, but either way I'm excited I'm I'm I'm, I'm built to go and Hopefully somebody miss weight. <laughs> well, best case scenario, they both miss weight, and then the two of you fight for the. the yeah, <laughs> <laughs> was, I already thought it was uh, Christmas for Thanksgiving with them giving me Karen, but that would I would cancel Christmas if that if that <laughs> I would just be I'd be on an uh, island somewhere for sure if that was the case. Thank you. But well, what can you tell us as as one of the PFL veterans? What has it been like for you? from the time you debuted with the PFL to now to see the PFL's growth? Because obviously we got the big news this week with Val Torres mentioned earlier. Like, yeah. what has that been like for you as a fire to kind of see that? I like I like that word, PFL vet, you know? Uh, I feel like, you know, when I first got to the PFL, it was a beautiful, beautiful organization. I ain't gonna say that I put the wheels on this bus that's moving, but, you know, I, I definitely helped put some tin on it. And, uh, you know, the numbers since I've gotten here and the, the type of uh, attitude and, and interviews and entertainment that I've brought with me to this organization and them eating it up and, and, and allowing me to be the bad man. You know, my walkout song, I don't think anybody, y'all can challenge it. I don't think anybody got a walkout like mine's. You know, I don't think anybody knows who's coming out before they see them like you do with mine. As soon as y'all hear that, da -na 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 -na, y'all know what time it is. So, um, I'm just grateful for them allowing me to be me, and I, I'm excited to see what they have in store when, when the new guys come on and how much bigger and how much of a rivalry will be with some of the other organizations. One last thing for me. Um, obviously, with the Bellator fighters coming over and having you been through the season format a few times now, what, can you, what would you say to those Bellator fighters that are thinking about getting into the season format in terms of the best way to handle the quick turnarounds and... Uh, massive activity year after year. What would you say to those that are considered? You got you got to be built for it tough. Um, you got to be resilient. You got to be you know the the race is not given to the swift. It's given to the one that up that endures. And this is it ain't there isn't another tournament like it. Even the old Bellator tournament, which I was uh, which I signed with them for, um, isn't the PFL format. This is this gives you the best champion. Um, in in one year, every year, the style, the the way that all professional sports are laid out, this is the closest way to every year picking a champion, every year seeing who can be available. Um, best ability is availability, and you know a lot of these guys get hurt, a lot of these guys pull out, a lot of these guys call out, a lot of these guys ask management for a way out, and with the PFL being the way that it is, it's win or go home and. There ain't no politics in it. You can't just have a good mouthpiece and, and get yourself in the championship because I would have talked my way to a championship multiple times.
Bubba, you're one of the biggest names in the PFL. You're a star in the cage and out of the cage now. It's your 10th fight in the organization. What has been your favorite moment here with PFL? Beating the hell out of Karen in Vegas was one of my favorite moments. Um, getting to fight Karen for Thanksgiving as Christmas present is another good moment for me. Um, fighting and leading up to the championship was a really awesome moment to be a part of. The biggest night in MMA for them last year was 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 paramount for me. Um, didn't get the job done, and that's why I came back hungry with a vengeance this year. Um, didn't get that done as well, but you know we are here to just continue the climb, and every year we get better. Um, I said something in the interviews the last time. I was saying, "Oh man, I've seen it all, and you know I've learned a lot." and you know, Pineda showed me something that I hadn't seen, and that was a storming and a and a uh, and a scrap that you know I was not prepared for. And being that he did that, I'm I'm assuming that there will be other fights like that. I'm assuming that they'll take that recipe and try to uh, match it, and and therefore you know I have focused on those type of things and and gotten better for it. So I'm excited about not only this performance but future performances. Awesome. Happy Thanksgiving. Last Thank question. Uh, Bubba, you know, obviously a lot of experience against Chris Wade. I'm just curious where you'd rank him amongst your toughest opponents. Dead ass last. <laughs> <laughs> what are you talking about? Dead ass last. He has not been a tough opponent at all. The first fight, I beat myself. The second fight, I'm not even, I gyrated on his neck. It was very easy. He didn't even know what was going on. Someone had to tell him that it happened. So he's not up there with toughest opponent. I would say um, Pinedo and, and Lock Name. Lock Name because of the durability and the smoothness and, and, and how I was I was biting down on that leg just to catch a bottle. Take a kick just to give me that. God, give it to me. And uh, he was good enough to just, you know, mosey out of the way and, and hit me with another kick and kick and kick and kick. So that was tough to deal with as I'm trying to climb and get towards him and I'm slowly hitting him and I'm, you know, slowly getting closer. But as I got there, I just kept getting pulled away by the pain in my leg. Um, so yeah, this this uh, this year, this fight is uh, a testament to my resilience and me rebuilding myself and getting knocked down. As you can see, I got new scars on my face that I'm actually pretty happy with. Right? <laughs> this, uh, this new new scar right here actually makes me look kind of kind of bad man like so. <laughs> Um, I'm appreciative of everything that I've been through to get to this moment, and um, you know I'm excited for not only you guys to be a part of what PFL is doing and and, and getting in the doors, but to to see where we go after this. Best luck, man.